if you're in the United Kingdom, this will be the main landing page. And you'll see that you have to agree to something called WMO Resolution 40, which you can pretty much ignore. It's just to ensure that you're not going to use the data for anything which is commercially sensitive. So you have to agree to these terms by clicking on the button. Now, what you're presented with for the global summary of day is the ability to download data for anywhere in the world for a particular geographical location, for example, Africa or Europe, or for a specific country. If you already know the range of st uh, station IDs for the weather stations you're going to be using, you can also include them here as well. Now, I'm going to just open data for Manchester in the United Kingdom. So I need to change this from the United States and select the UK. And all I need to do then is click on continue. This just confirms that I've selected the United Kingdom. So I just click on continue a second time. And what you'll notice is that there's a long list of weather stations. And these are weather stations dotted all around the country. Some of them, you'll notice they no longer report. So, for example, Flash and Stafford reported from 1973 to 1979. So if you were happy to have data for that location between those dates, that would be OK. But if you wanted something more up to date, you'd have to keep on searching until you see data, for example, at Kinloss uh, from 1973 to 2020. If you have a few locations that you'd like to select, you can hold down the control key and you can select multiple weather stations. And these weather stations are in alphabetical order. So where they are on the list is not necessarily related to their geographical location. So it'd be better to find out the uh, location of weather stations before you go through this process or if you're not sure where one of these uh, is actually located, is to actually do a search on, on Google Maps to see where it would likely to be. So I'm interested in Manchester, so I'm going to go down to uh, M, and I'm going to select Manchester. This is quite a good data record from 1973 to 2020, which is uh, April, which is pretty much current at the time I'm recording this. So once you're happy selecting the station or stations, plural, if you need more than one, you just click on the continue button. This then gives you the opportunity to either select a very specific uh, day. You can't select hour, of course, because this is the summary of the, a 24 hour period. Um, or if you wish, you can select a date range. So here I'm just going to go for the first two months in 2020. So 2020, January the 1st, to 2020, uh, the 1st of February. Um, so that will give me uh, just a month's worth of data there. And so once you've selected the date range that you want, don't just click on continue because there are two things you need to do. The first is if you're using Microsoft Excel or something like Microsoft Excel, the spreadsheet package, you'll probably want to change this to comma delimited. And this is for two reasons. Comma delimited files are very widely used by data analytical software packages where each column of information, which is a different variable, will be separated by a comma. It's a fairly universal file format. Also, if you do have Microsoft Excel installed on your system, the resulting file with the .csv file extension will automatically load into Microsoft Excel when you double click on it. The other thing it needs to make sure is that you're not a robot, so you have to click here to confirm and then click on continue. So the data itself is here. It's, this is the download link. And what you shouldn't do is just click on that because it will open in your browser. Um, so what I would recommend is that you click on it with the right hand mouse button and then save that to a file. One thing, though, you should notice, which is very important, is this link, although it says icon, it's actually missing an icon. That's the download link for the data format documentation. And I'm going to right click on that and click open in a new window. There is actually information about each of the variables contained within that file that I'm about to download. So it tells me, for example, that the, uh, the average temperature and the dew points 
uh, and the maximum minimum temperatures, they're all in Fahrenheit, not in Celsius. They'll need converting if you're outside of the US. Also, the sea level pressure is in millibars, not hectopascals. Um, and you'll notice it gives you a snow depth, an indication of whether there's fog or hail or thunder or whatever. And so you'll be able to read a little bit more about the, the specific format and what each of these columns, because you may, when you open this thing, what do these different column headings mean? This is to enable you to work out what each of these column headings uh, relates to. And notice that where there's missing data, it will, which is normal convention, it will actually give you a 9999.9 value where there's missing data. And so you need to be aware of that because if you're going to calculate an average, you've got to strip out those, those uh, rows which contain those coding for missing data. Otherwise, you're going to have an extremely high average value. Uh, the reason why they don't just leave it blank, they put a 9999.9 a in there, is so that you know that there hasn't been any data file corruption. So it's just to help you uh, see where data is missing because perhaps the, the equipment wasn't working properly. And there are different flag codes here, again, that you'll see included in some of those cells. And if you're wondering what on earth they mean, it tells you in this uh, separate file. So it's very worthwhile having a look at that uh, before you download the data. So to download the data then, I'm going to right click with my right hand mouse button and I'm going to choose save link as. That's for Firefox, a different browser. We'll have some slightly different wording here. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to just click on save because it'll save it with a .txt file extension, uh, which means it'll only open in Notepad. I want this to open in Microsoft Excel because it's a, a CSV file. So what I'm going to do is going to highlight that rather cryptic long file name, and I'm going to put in double quotation marks uh, because it's for Manchester. I'm just going to call it Manchester, and I'm going to give it a .txt. CSV file extension. So when it saves the file, instead of .txt, I'm forcing it to give a .csv, which is comma separated values. Although the format is a text file, it'll have a .csv file extension. And that means that when that icon appears, in this case, on my desktop, because that's where I'm saving it, all I have to do is double click on it. It'll automatically load into Microsoft Excel. Uh, because Excel will know what a .csv file is. So I just click on save, and that's it. It's saved, and it's ready to go.